Uh, I have a question for Dr. Zhao. Yeah. Uh, you talk about the uh, ionic system. Yeah, some farmers in European countries have used that in the commercial system. Uh, what's the current state of INM system? Can that be used to track individual birds like for get scoring? Thank you. So, hi, Dr. Chai, do you mean the RFID? Or... No, uh, INM system. Oh, uh, yeah. So, INM system, uh, first, thank you for the question. And INM system is, de is developed by, by a European company. So, that's probably the first. Uh, one of the first uh, POF system, um, you know, available in the market. So our research, well, the problem of that system that it is the high cost, right? So that's the reason, you know, um, a few years ago, we got funded by FFER to develop an affordable, you know, kind of similar affordable system that can do evaluate the gate score, working ability of the broader chicken. And, um, uh, now, um, so basically, we aimed to develop a two system. One is the uh, evaluate the gate score at the flock level, and uh, that's for that system. We use a top view, uh, you know, camera system to do that, you know, monitor the activity and distribution of the birds, and then use that to predict the uh, the gate score of the entire flock. And one, uh, my collaborator, Dr. Hao Gai, also from uh, University of Tennessee. So he developed another system, basically used a kind of a side view system, right? So use that uh, camera to track the key points of individual birds. Now with those key points, he developed another model um, to predict the individual, gate, uh, the individual gate score. So we have two set of system, you know, both at, uh, gate score at the flock level and at individual bird level. Thank you. Thank you. Another question is for Dr. Jenkinson or uh, Dr. Menendez. Uh, in recent months, we uh, heard a lot of news about uh, cattle are infected by avian influenza. Is there any technology or sensors we can consider to address that issue on posture? Dr. Jackson, do you want to take that one first or would you like me to? Uh, I'll let you take it first. So within the Northern Great Plains, which just for context is one of the, uh, they call it the duck factory because there's so many prairie pothole wetlands. I really see that as a major concern considering the interaction of animals with ponded water where birds may choose to aggregate and that that might be a vector for that disease. And so I could see virtual fencing being a solution or um, in terms of excluding those areas. Uh, but it, other than that, there really haven't been any uh, ideas proposed for that or health monitoring that I'm aware of. Um, but great question. Thank you. Thank you. I think from uh, our standpoint, you know, it might be the implementation. So it would be potentially the active power tags would be one way we can monitor that health. So we can, you know, the, the cow manager tags can measure temperature. You're looking for that change in activity. If there wasn't an, an issue, hopefully we'd be able to detect it with that, you know, with the cow manager tag and then send the drone out there to collect information from the tag and, and acquire it that way. You know, it'd, it'd be a challenge. We'd have to look for a change in activity. If it's, if it's subclinical, it might be really, it, it would be really hard to detect. But if it's a clinical issue, there would be a chance that we could detect it and maybe isolate or, or figure out some way to ameliorate the issue. Thank you. You know, just quickly add uh, to my colleague's point that yeah, we do have a thermal drone, but what is it? bird flu or is it something else? And so that would just pose a, a real challenge there. So a great point there. Great. Let's see. And, uh, we've got another question is, where are the wonders of digital fences?
So the question is, where are the funders? And so could you clarify um, in terms of the manufacturers or startups? I yeah, I, I guess the question is for manufacturer, for the digital fancies. So, um, and again, I don't want to advocate for any specific group. We use the virtual fencing company called Vents, which is now owned by Merck. There's Gallagher. Um, they're out of Australia. I believe Halter as well. And uh, Gallagher is a little bit more limited in the U.S. because they really spend a lot of time on product development. Halter has just released their callers to the U.S. Um, there's a Norwegian company um, called No Fence. Uh, it even has a little cool little tune to it if you lose the collar. And there's also um, Corral Technologies out of Nebraska that I'm aware of right now. I feel like I'm missing one, but those are the kind of four or five big players that I'm aware of. Uh, some have different functionalities that rely on Bluetooth or uh, a lower WAN communication, which is a low radio wave communication. And others like the Corral utilize or will utilize a satellite wave chip that should be really low cost and low power uh, for, for those energies. There's also an ear tag being developed through an AFRI Ideas program by Karen Launchball. And there's, it's based off ear tags on the cattle and a little radio container that will be spread throughout the pastures. Uh, the next question is about the bird flu on pasture, I guess. Are there any collaborations ongoing between wildlife fox monitoring migration birds and a veterinary fox looking to track disease spread? Who would like to take the question? I can feel that one unless Dr. Zhao, but um, not that I'm uh, currently aware of, but I, I would be hard, it'd be hard to believe there aren't uh, those going on right now. Yeah, I'm not aware of such such research, but I do know that we have a real time kind of migration map that has a lot of great information there. We definitely need to leverage the value of data over there. So that's a that's a great question. That's a great suggestion. <laughs> uh, next question: Even a couple of hours might be helpful, but a sooner would be better. Um, Imagine a situation where a producer could schedule a drone flight every three hours inside their house, and it would alert them to a situation inside of the house that might need their attention. So, you know, right right now, there are companies available that can pretty much do that. So DJI, I guess being the predominant one, they have a DJI drone dock. And so it's a significant investment, but there would be a way to... Uh, but there would be a way to do that. And so we could schedule flights and have it pretty much almost a time. So right now they want to, you know, we're limited by, we may maintain visual line of sight for the drones, but there are, you know, getting exemptions for beyond visual line of sight. So we can fly more, much more autonomously. Uh, or there are capabilities where we could fly much more autonomously. And so I think, you know, that would open up a lot of opportunities, but, you know, having, having that drone dock, and I think, as time goes on, the price will come down. So a lot of similar to other technologies becomes more and more popular, the price will come down. I think the initial one they had was at least $30,000. I think it's coming down and, and, and improving. But, you know, from a practical standpoint, it'd be, it'd be hard to justify. Um, but we could, I mean, we could have them set up where they fly relatively autonomously. Thank you.